All right. So I want to do a quick video on the connecting rod. So um, uh, it's very common, and um, I know someone had mentioned this in my last video, um, that uh, people check for up and down play. Right, but they don't check for side to side play. They assume side to side play is good, and that's not actually true. So first of all, there's clearance between uh, the side to side, so moving it side to side, and second, there is the play of moving the rod back and forth. You can see this one has a tiny bit of back and forth play. And what can happen is I usually go over to the side and see if. I can get it to scrape off the side. That's another crank over here. You can see this one has even less play. I mean, I can barely move it side. And the side to side play is very minimal. And again, to see if you can scrape it off the side. Now, I had had a bike one time that um, didn't have any up and down play, but had such a bad side to side play that. In fact, I've seen this a couple times to where you just push it over to the side, you'll scrape the crank. And when that starts to happen, well, you need to replace this. Now, um, uh, now you will have some side-to-side -side play. That's true. But you have to know um, how much side-to-side -side play is good and how much side-to-side -side play is bad. Um, so, in fact, one of the bikes that had side-to-side -side play, didn't have any up and down play, was a... Uh, Husqvarna 250 that I had gotten and the connecting rod the middle of it was completely pink It was all burned up because every time the engine was running it would scrape off the crank So it's not a good situation to be in. Now here's the other bike and This one has more side-to-side -side play than the other two that I just showed you. You can see that's a lot. We make a clanking sound. Yeah, you can see how much side to side this thing has. A lot. Doesn't scrape off the crank. There's no scraping. But I'm going to tear it apart anyway, so you might as well replace it, right? I mean, it's 15 years old. As you can see, this one here, almost none. And I'm replacing this one actually because, I don't know. I have a new one for it. Not realizing it for no reason, very much, but I guess more like because I feel like it. But this one here actually is good. <laughs> I probably don't even need to replace it. This one here is also good and has actually more side to side play than this one. Yeah, this one actually has more than this one, but it's still good. It's in the good range. But the other one I just show you is bad. It does not have good. Um, That's, that's too much. Um, so, here's one interesting thing though. These, this is a 500 crank and this is a 490 crank. So, around 1982, they extended uh, the connecting rod the same length. But they extended this one by a little bit more to the outside so that it would get more. Uh, so it would be a 500. So, can actually take a look and see how what they did. There's the 490. There's the 500. Okay. And uh, one more thing to show you on this. So, in here, I do have a lot of um, a lot of books. Like this is actually um, Dirt Bike Magazine number one, signed by. Rick Seaman, actually. So, um, looking at some of these books over here. So, this is the actual 490 uh, Mako 1983 Mako 490 uh, 250 book. And here, it even talks about side to side play. Maximum connecting rod play is 3 millimeters. So, as you can see, A is the center so you can go this way at one and a half millimeter and this way one and a half millimeter and be within spec also it talks to you about down here is how much 
space there can be between the rod and the crank for the different bikes. So, um, here's another book. This is on the KTM 495. I can show you that. Let's see, KTM 495. Um, and it talks about the clearance between here and different clearances, checking the crankshaft end play. Um, this is a Honda CR500 book, and it talks about, um, this one only actually says up and down play, but it also talks about end to end play. It doesn't talk about side to side. So, um, I would still, like I said, if, you're, if, you're, if there's too much side to side play, it's an old bike, I'd replace the rod even if there's no up and down play. Because you're spending a lot of money to put your bike back together, you don't want to run into a problem, right? I mean, if it's starting to go back side to side, that bearing's still wearing down, right? It's still wearing down the sides, so. Um, but it's a, it's a preference. I mean, I could still, that 440 I have right now, it's not that bad where it won't run. Of course it's gonna run. Um, it's just, I have the bike apart now. Well, um, so I should just replace that anyways, you know? So, now the 500, now that one there doesn't need replaced, but I just felt like replacing it, so. All right, so I just wanted to um, go over this. Um, and this is pretty common. A lot of, a lot of people don't know about side-to-side uh, -side play is, is a problem on bikes. Um, in fact, my friend had taken his engine to the auto parts shop that also did um, uh, dirt bikes, 51 auto parts, and, um, McKeesport, and um, he took it there, and, and they're like, oh, the connecting rod's good. He's like, no, it's not. Look, it'll scrape off the side if you push it to the side, and they're like, oh, yeah, that is pretty bad, so <clears throat> that's just a, um, another thing to look out for, um, and the Mako manual clearly um, puts status that, you know, side-to-side -side play, um, so at least uh, uh, a Mako recommends only a certain amount of a side to side play before you should re replace the, uh, the rod. All right. So, I uh, just wanted to share that. Yep, thanks. Thanks for watching.